Okay, good to see you guys today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about um, the difference between a mullet rig, which most of you guys all know what it is, or should we go with a gang hook? Why would you wanna use this? And we're gonna get into it right now. I fish the east coast of the United States, New Jersey, and if you go in any tackle shop, you're gonna see this type of setup where you're gonna have uh, you know, a, a three-way swivel with a snap swivel connected to a, most likely a pyramid sinker. So this rig here, again, is called a mullet rig. You'll find it in any shop. And it has one thing and one thing in mind only, typically, and that's to uh, catch bluefish. Some people call them Taylor if you're in Australia. And this is the go-to rig. Highly effective, but it does have its flaws. And the flaws aren't easy to work out. So when you're using this rig and you're trying to catch bluefish, the biggest flaw <clears throat> is that, I don't know if it's just me or if the bluefish have got smarter over the years, but if you look at this, the mullet actually, you guys all know what this is. You take your mullet fish and you basically impale it on here. And then it has its tail here and its head here and then you just basically put this on like that. Boom. And then you pull it down and then the mullet is on there. And you cast it out. It lands in the water. This bobber is gonna float up, right? And it's gonna be like this. The mullet rig kind of floating up in the water. So <clears throat> what happens is when a bluefish shows up, it sees it. Typically, by instinct, bluefish are going to bite the tail of the bait. If they see a small fish, they're not going to bite the head, typically. That's different with other species, but for whatever reason. Now, the problem is, if they don't bite right at the, the hook, they, they're, you're not going to, they're going to take the tail off. And it happens so many times, you know what I'm talking about. When you cast out and you feel that hit in the bluefish and you reel in real quick, and then you realize you lost it, what happens when you look at the mullet bait that's on there? You see the head, you see the torso, and then there's like a chomp mark out and the tail's gone, but you don't have the fish. Um, sometimes what you'll do is you'll cast this out with the mullet on and you'll get a feel of hit. You'll start reeling it in and you'll find out that you don't have the fish because what did it do? The blue fish bit it right at the torso here. And you'll see an actual bite mark out of the side of your mullet. Uh, and it was nowhere near the hook because it bit halfway up the fish, the mullet bait. So then you reel it in, you put another mullet on, you cast out, you don't get any hits for a while, you reel it in, you cast it out again, maybe down, down the beach a little bit, still don't get any hits. Then you try to cast it again, you reel it back in, and then you notice that your mullet basically has slid down and it's been splitting almost to the point where it's ready to fall off like an old banana peel. Another problem with this too, believe it or not, is when a bluefish hits this, it shakes this mullet rig with such um, force, it can actually shake it and pull the hook out. That doesn't happen that often, but it can. You know, there are times when I've caught big bluefish that had big, big head shakes and they ripped this thing right up, right off, amazingly. You know, it, it's not a bad rig. I'm not putting it down. But for years, I asked myself, is there a better way of doing this with the amount of bluefish I catch off the Jersey Shore? And uh, I came up with something. Well, actually not me, but as you know, I've been doing some research with Australian side casting rigs down in Australia. And like I said, maybe mentioned before, they do <laughs> catch bluefish just like we do, exact same species. Uh, about the same size. I noticed that they, they typically catch slightly smaller ones than the bigger gator blues that we can catch up our way here in, uh, on the Jersey Shore and along the east coast of the United States. But, um, you know, they, they catch, they're, they're decent fish. And, you know, their surf conditions are similar to what we have on the east coast. Their structure is similar. Um, I'll get into it in another video on how much, what the similarities and differences are. But the fact is, they're using surf poles and they're casting great distances to get out to the outer bar. And uh, in order to get, in order to do that, they're using a slightly different setup. I already showed you uh, the side cast reel that they use. 
Now I wanted, and you saw a little bit of the Stealth uh, 65R fully graphite uh, pairing pole that goes with that graphite uh, reel I have. I, I showed you in the last, in an earlier video. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you this rig here. Now this is a, I guess you would call it a, ta a gang hook tailor rig. And I don't see anyone using this on the Jersey Shore. And I tried it last year and it worked very, very well. Now I can't show you right now because it's not quite the season, but we're gonna use this rig in May, in May sometime, when the, maybe in April, late April possibly, when the water hits 50 degrees, degree, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when the bite's on in the surf. And that's when you start seeing uh, bluefish, Taylor showing up, um, all different shapes and sizes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we build this. And before I do show you how to build this, I'm gonna just talk to you a little bit about what it is and why it is the way it is. And you're gonna find this pretty interesting. So at the end here, you're basically seeing, you're seeing five -aught, three five-aught Mustang hooks at the end here. There you go. Three hooks all ganged together, five-aught five straight-eye Mustang hooks. And look closely what I have there. I have small barrel swivels holding them, connecting them together so I can spin them around. Then what happens is then I have a, uh, like a 60 pound steel leader with a crimp. And then I have about 16 inches of the leader. So, you know, everybody knows bluefish have teeth. They can bite right through it. So I have a crimp. And then I have a very high quality stainless steel barrel swivel. You need to have a really high performance swivel. And I'm gonna explain what's going on there in a second. So then what you have is you have a pretty decent test of about maybe eh, no less than 40 pounds, 40 pound test for about another 16 inches. And then what I have is I have this. This is something you don't typically see uh, when you're doing malt, when you're doing blue fishing off the Jersey Shore. And I have a six ounce uh, egg sinker on there and I have another rubber uh, bumper bead. Okay, soft rubber, has to be soft. And then to finish it off, I have a stainless, another stainless steel barrel swivel. So that's about it for now. I mean, I'll show you how we, how you build this, what the specifications are, what, what size the wire is, you know, all, all that good stuff. So stay tuned, you'll, t you'll see the next video, okay?